Heavenly Father, we thank you for our service today. We're asking, Lord, that today you'll do something unforgettable in every life in Jesus' name. Something we'll never forget. Something we'll leave to remember. That you do in every life today in Jesus' name. Your touch once again. Your power once again. The anointing once again. The great overflowing blessing once again. And also people declare, each one, that they believe. I pray that that great thing they are believing you for, you will do it for everyone today in Jesus' name. Manifest yourself to everyone. Revive your people and move us forward in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 10. And I'm reading to you from verse 22. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. It says, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Once again, it says in verse 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. You'll find those two verses starting with, let us do something. Verse 22, let us draw near. As we're thinking and talking about the forward march, about our progress. There is a lasting progress. There is a spiritual progress. There is a satisfying progress. There is a supernatural kind of progress that only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it tells us, let's move on. Let's draw near. It comes through the blood of Jesus. It comes through the grace of Jesus. It comes through the ministry of Jesus. And as you think about how the New Testament people march forward and they make progress, you find that this kind of progress comes through the name of Jesus, through the power of Jesus. It comes through the provision of the cross, the provision of Jesus. It comes through the word and it comes through the intercession of Jesus. You can tell that if you don't have Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, if you're not connected with Jesus, you might make what you call some progress. But it's merely human progress and it doesn't last. It's almost nothing in the light of eternity. And in the sight of God, that progress without Christ, that progress without grace, that progress without a supernatural power coming upon your life is like almost nothing. Without God, without grace, without Christ, without Calvary, without the progress that comes from the hand of God. Watch a spiritual coincidence that we're looking at Hebrews chapter 10, and we are also talking about progress. Actually, as you look at the epistle to the Hebrews, it's moving you from down to up so that you can make an onward progress, a forward progress, an upward progress. We're talking about forward progress in the believer's journey of faith. Forward progress in the believer's journey of faith. Before we go to the different aspects, 
I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Forward progress in the believer's journey of faith. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, and it's written for you, I has not seen, no ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things, plural, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. This is going to be personal now, but at a certain I has not seen, no ear heard, None that have entered into the heart of any man that knew you. The sin which God has prepared for you because you love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. You are ready to receive. Yeah. Forward progress in the believer's journey of faith. Three things we're looking at before we pray. Number one, manifesting a strong persuasion of faith. You see, all that the Lord has provided for you and for me and for us, we need faith so that as we stretch out our hand of faith, knowing that all our needs are going to be supplied, we need to manifest this confidence in God, this trust in God, and this strong persuasion. Number one, manifesting a strong persuasion of faith. Point number two, making a steady progress through fellowship. Making a a steady progress through fellowship. As you think about it, whatever height you want to reach, whatever goal you want to attain, and whatever achievement you want to have, you cannot go too far all alone by yourself. Sometimes you need a help, a helper, Counsel, a counselor, a partner in partnership. Sometimes you need somebody to lift up your hand. Sometimes you need somebody to come alongside with you and say, keep on moving. You can make it. And it is through that kind of fellowship that eventually that goal that seems unattainable, unobtainable, unreachable, Eventually, you reach that goal. You are not going to remain as you are today. Life is not going to remain as life has always been. There's a higher realm waiting for you. Making a steady progress through fellowship. Point number three, maintaining steadfast perseverance in faithfulness. After the Lord has led us there, after the Lord has taken us there, we need to maintain what we have got. Have you noticed when you went to school, you studied, you prepared for a great exam, a defining moment in your life for this exam, and praise the Lord, you made it. Let's say, for example, you made a first class. After that first class, have you noticed? Six months after, one year after, if you were to be called to take that same exam that you took and you made a first class one year ago, you might discover that you can barely even score something that will give you a pass because there is no steady perseverance in faithfulness maintaining what you have got. But you know, what you are getting here today, you will keep. 
if anything today will be like a springboard and for the rest of your life you'll be springing it will be as if you are walking on air and you'll be moving forward and forward until you see the Lord face to face in Jesus name maintaining steadfast perseverance in faithfulness we're coming to number one do you have any number one there over there can you preach it to me God bless you and that, that's important to simply when I say God bless you you need an amen for that manifesting a strong persuasion of faith we're coming back to Hebrews chapter 10 and I'm reading from verse 19 these words are inspired words deliberate words they're words you need to act on not only to read not only to understand something you need to act on it says in verse 19 having therefore What's it there for? There for. It's there because it says it's offered a more excellent sacrifice. He has a more excellent ministry. It's providing a more excellent provision. And everything you are getting is going to be better and higher and greater. It says, therefore, if that is your expectation, Therefore, if that is your goal, therefore, if that is what you are reaching out for, it says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter. Boldness to enter. It's saying, you must remember when Aaron came to the Holy of Holies, he came with trepidation. He came with fear. And because of that, there were little, little bells around his garment. Because if he entered into the Holy of Holies and he made any mistake there, he will drop down dead. And when the people do not hear the sound of those bells around his garment anymore, they know he's gone. They know he's dead. And there was a rope attached to his garment to him. And then they pull him out because they couldn't enter into the Holy of Holies themselves. But he says, now Christ has removed all the limitation from that. He has removed all the hindrances from entry to the holiest. Therefore, he says, have been there for boldness to enter. I will enter. You'll enter today. Have been boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, look at this, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. It says, as we're coming, and we're coming for the blessings of God, we're coming for the provision of Calvary, we're coming for everything that Christ has provided. It says, we're coming confidently we're coming boldly we're coming fearlessly it says with a full assurance of faith full assurance of faith and then he tells us in verse 23 let us hold fast let us hold fast the profession of our faith what does that mean you know there comes a time in your life you're hoping for a particular fulfillment of a promise. And you're saying, I know the Lord will do it. I know the Lord will grant it unto me. I'm asking for this. I see the promise in the word of God. I see the provision of Calvary. I see that this is mine. It's going to be mine today. And then the moment of reaching out and the moment of praying and the moment of saying, yes, I claim it is mine. That moment comes, but now you're weak. That moment comes and then you are doubtful. That moment comes and then you are shaking in your faith. That's why it says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. You will not waver. Something good must happen in your life today. Your family, something good must happen. 
the blessing of God must enrich your life before you go today. And we come with strong persuasion of faith. Strong persuasion of faith. Whatever your spiritual need, it will be fulfilled today. Whatever you have been crying about, the Lord is going to wipe away your tears today. And whatever it is, you are even not you are ashamed to tell anybody, I need this, I need this. They'll say, You of all people, I thought you have got this already, but today is the day. The day of blessing. But it says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Why? For that means because he is faithful that promised. Amen. Amen. Our God is faithful. He is faithful that promised. Look at the many things that have promised us. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He is faithful that promised. He says, I am the Lord that sanctify you. He is faithful that promise. He says, I am the Lord your healer. He is faithful that promise. He says, God, the God of peace, shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Even today, he is faithful that promise. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for, for who now? For you and he says if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and take you and receive you unto myself remember he is faithful that promised it says resist the devil and he will flee from you remember he is faithful that promise that's why you manifest a strong assurance of faith and it will be done. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. I'm reading here from verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickness the dead. God who quickness the dead is going to quicken everything that is dead in your life. Dead in your spirit. Dead in your soul. Everything that is dead in your forward march, the Lord is able to quicken it today and he will do it in Jesus' name. And he says, because he is faithful, because he is able and because he has promised this is what he will do today is a day of fulfillment in your life it says he quickness the dead and collect those things would be not as do they were when you come to the side of god when you come in agreement with god and you also call those things would be not as do they were I table that sin in prayer in the presence of the Lord. And even though I've not seen it in the physical, in the spiritual, I can see it. I know it's coming. And I call those things we be not as though they were. Look at verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith if you're going to be weak at all in anything which is inexcusable but if you're going to be weak at all in anything you must not be weak in faith you have a full assurance and you have strong persuasion of faith. And he says, be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. Whatever has been negative, you will not consider. Negative dream. Negative feeling. Negative uh, situation, circumstance. Today is not the uh, time or the day of negative things 
But today, we're going to take that negative to that uh, workshop, and we're going to develop something, a good picture, out of that negative thing in Jesus' name. It says, Then when he was a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Look at verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. That's manifesting you know, a strong persuasion of faith. And that is how we have the fulfillment of the promise of God in our lives. And being fully persuaded. Are you persuaded today that God is going to bless you? That you're going to move forward. That you're going to make progress. That those areas of concern in your personal life, in your spiritual life, that today is that day when the Lord is going to move you forward in Jesus' name. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Able also to perform. In my life today, able also to perform. I said your life today is able also to perform. I look at Romans chapter 10. Reading from verse 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what says it? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth. And in thine heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith which we preach. And then the word of faith which you yourself speak. The word of faith which you yourself recollect and remember. The words of faith which you yourself will stand on. The word we hear on the pulpit is the word of faith. The word of the Father. The word of God that cannot be denied. If you will take that word which we preach and you take it inside your heart and bring it outside your mouth and proclaim that same word, nothing different. That word of promise I hear I also repeat, I also believe, I also stand on. Something good must happen. Yeah. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart, that if you declare it with your mouth, and you believe it in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be healed. Thou shalt be blessed. Thou shalt be sanctified. Thou shalt be transformed. You receive the word in your heart. You confess it with your mouth that that word is mine. We have preached it is the word of faith which we preach and there you bring it out from your heart and you say I believe that salvation will come to you for with the heart in verse 10 man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation any amen over there Acts chapter 15 I'm reading from verse 9 Acts chapter 15 reading from verse 9 it says and put no difference between us and them hold on put no difference here is Peter the apostle Peter speaking he said look at Cornelius look at his house the thing that surprised us Peter speaking to the rest of the people in the church in Jerusalem. The thing that surprised me is that he put no difference between them Gentiles and us Jews. There's no difference. He had their prayer, he will hear your prayer. 
he put no difference between us, the apostles, and them, the newcomers. He had a prayer as apostles. It's going to answer your prayer, even though you're a newcomer. He put no difference between them on the pulpit and us in the pew. As he answers our prayers when we talk here, he will answer your prayer as you pray over there. Look at that verse 9. And he put no difference between us and them. Purifying their hearts by faith. That's sanctification. That's the real thing. He gives us peace at salvation. He gives us purity at sanctification. And he says there's no difference. As the apostles were sanctified, as they prayed and believed God, he says there's no difference that he will purify your heart. He will sanctify you. Galatians chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 13, Galatians chapter 3. We're looking at verse 13. It says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. You know, there are people, you have to say the same thing with your mouth. We read it in the Bible. We read it in the covenant. We read it in the new covenant, New Testament. And then we believe that in our hearts. No curse will follow you. No curse will follow your children. No curse will come on your family. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. For it is written, Cursed said is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Look at this. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ and that we might receive let me back up a little that I might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You see, salvation by grace through faith. Sanctification by grace through faith. Here is the power of the Holy Ghost. Here is the Holy Ghost baptism, the promise of the Spirit. And it says that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. We are going to have something. A reaching blessing of God. All the promises of God fulfilled in your life. Fulfilled in my life. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 6. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Peter knew that he had something. I know I have something. I said I know I have something. The name of Jesus was not given to Peter alone to monopolize. And he says, that was given to me. How are you saying that name? That same name has been given to you. The name above every name. Above the name of any disease, any terminal disease, that name has been given to you. It says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Tell me. Say the way you'll say it when you get back home. Rise up and walk. And it took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength how verse 16 verse 16 and through faith in his name has made this man strong where is the man 
I said, what is a woman? Through faith in his name. That name has not failed. That name can never fail. And that name is working today. It says, through faith in his name has made this man strong whom ye see and know will see you. And the strength of the Lord will see you or the blessing of the Lord. And it says, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Amen. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We're reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, this is what we need to claim the promises of God and to have every prayer answered above all beyond what you feel and beyond what you think you have beyond what you think you don't have above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench tell me say it out aloud you shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked. You will be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked. Coming from the paths of darkness, we overcome today. Coming from the forest, we overcome today. Coming from the ocean, we overcome today. Coming from the village, we overcome today. Manifesting a strong persuasion of faith. That's the only way we move forward. Above all, taking the shield of faith. When we he shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. How will that happen? First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 24. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. In your life, he will do it. This is going to be a new day in your life. A day of moving forward in progress. Faithful. Is he that calleth you who also will do it? I'm making progress. I am making progress. The things that tied me down before, they'll never tie me down again. Say it for yourself. The things that tied me down before will not tie me down again. I'm moving forward. Ah, I can't hear my people. I'm moving forward. I am moving onward. I am moving upward. Progress in your life in Jesus' name. Point number two, making steady progress through fellowship. Making steady progress through fellowship. We're coming back now to... Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 24. It says, Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. How do you tell that somebody is making progress? He loves today more than he loved yesterday. That's progress. He's strong today and stronger more than it was yesterday that's progress it's an encouragement to people today more than it was yesterday that's progress 
was saying, I thank God for sister so and so today more than I could tell. Yesterday, if I wanted to say that, I'd be looking for what am I going to thank God for? And I'm searching, I'm searching, and I have to ransack every area of her life to find something I'm thanking God for. But today, I just look at her and I say, look at progress in front of me. I thank God today that she is an encouragement more than she was yesterday. That's progress. I thank God today that his strength today and his helping hand today is greater than what I saw of him yesterday. That's progress. And he says, when you're provoking others not to be angry, you're provoking others not to be discouraged, you're provoking others not to backslide, you're provoking others unto love. That's progress. That's progress. It says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Look at verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. That's the fellowship there. Exhorting one another, encouraging one another, edifying one another, admonishing one another, counseling one another, lifting up one another so much the more as she said that day approaching that is the progress progress comes through what we do for others not just what we get from others what we do not use we lose you have eyes you are not using you're going to lose your sight you have a mind you are not using, you are going to lose that mind. You have a brain you are not using, you are going to lose the brain. You have hands and you are not using the hand and you fold it up, you are going to lose those hands. But when you open up those hands and when you send forth the hand of help to other people, you make progress. Look at the car that somebody parks down there. The car is all right. The car is good. But his neighbor is going to the same place as he is going. And so he says, can I ride with you? Oh, the neighbor said, all right, ride with me. The following day, can I ride with you? Oh, yes, ride with me. He has his own car. He will not use the car. The car eventually will be grounded because it is out of use. The same thing with the gift of God in your life. You've seen others' brains will paralyze your own brain. You've seen others' legs carry me, carry me. And you're not using your own legs. Eventually, those legs will forget how to move. Or you're using other people's property. And you say, I'm a go-getter. No, be a go-giver. It is when you use what you have to help other people, that's when you'll have growth and increase and progress. Give yourself away and make progress. Progress in love, progress in caring, progress in distribution, progress in edification, progress in giving help, progress in nourishing other people, feeding other people, Progress in lifting up other people. Progress in reaching out. Progress in sacrificing for others. Progress in interceding for others. Think less of yourself. Think more of others. Spend less on yourself. Spend more for others. Look at that verse 24 again. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, it says, Let us consider one another. Consider those who are weak. Consider those who are poor. Consider those who are carnal. Consider those who are backsliding. Consider those who are not strong. Consider those who are looking up to you for help. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love. And to good works. Look at John chapter 13. John chapter 13. This is the fellowship that grants us steady progress. In John chapter 13, reading from verse 34, verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another. 
That's not a theoretical law, by the way. That's practical love. What can I do for him to encourage him? What can I do for her to encourage her? What can I do for that person that is down to lift him up? It says, this is the new commandment he has given, that we love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. In fact, in verse 35, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye have, tell me, love one for another. Love one for another. Is a fellowship that brings progress in life. Romans chapter 12. In Romans chapter 12, reading from verse 10. Romans chapter 12, reading from verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another. Be kind. Words will speak, actions that will manifest. The comments will pass, the utterances of our mouth, the look on our face, the interaction we have, the influence we have on other people. Be kind, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor. Tell me, in honor, tell me out aloud, preferring one another see something good the other person has and you don't have as much let your comment show that you prefer the other person you love the other person you encourage the other person and it says in honor preferring one another not slothful in business fervent in spirit serving the lord rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation Continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints. Don't always be asking, uh, they didn't visit me, visit them. They didn't give me food, give them food. They didn't give me something to meet my need, you give something to meet their need. It says, distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving to hospitality. Bless them that persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. When they are rejoicing, what is it they are rejoicing about? That thing may look like a small thing to you, inconsequential to you, insignificant to you. But you know what the Bible says? Here is fellowship. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one to another. Be of the same mind one to another. Get out of yourself. Think of what he wants. Think of what she needs. And he says, you are not mindful about your own need, but you are mindful of the needs of other people. Be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Always thinking about what I know they don't know, what I have they don't have, what I can do they cannot do, where I can reach they cannot reach. Stop talking like that. And be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as it lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Amen. Amen. You'll be a man of peace a woman of peace. And the peace of God will flow through you to other people in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 14, verse 13. Romans chapter 14, verse 13. Let us not judge, therefore, one another anymore. Have you noticed in your life that every day you're always judging people 
You're not judging yourself. You're not thinking of what I must correct in my life. You're not thinking about areas of improvement. Are, you, are we going to make progress? And everybody you see, you see somebody on the street, you're judging. And you see somebody in the office, you're judging. You read something in the papers, they're not even there for you to talk to them directly. You're judging. You hear an information, a piece of information about somebody, you are judging. And you don't ever take any vacation from judging. In the church, you judge. In the family, you're always judging. Why don't you say, now I must make progress. Somebody there will make progress. You make progress in Jesus' name. You see, here is a major area of progress. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put his stumbling block on occasion to fall in his brother's way. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 13. Galatians chapter 5. We're reading from verse 13. For brethren, Ye have been called unto liberty, freedom. Only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. That's how to make progress. And you learn to do by doing. And the more you do something regularly, you are giving regularly, it becomes part of your life. You are saying something wonderful, something nice about another person, and you make a practice of that every time, it becomes a habit. And you are contributing to the upliftment of other people's joy and happiness and strength and health. It becomes a habit. It says, we shall serve one another by love. Look at verse 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another envying one another. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. That's progress, that's progress. He used to steal. It's not there anymore, it's making progress. He used to lie. He doesn't lie anymore. Is making progress, and he used to take what belongs to other people. He will hide his own. He will keep his own. He will lock up his own, and then he'll be, you know, telling other people, you know, can you help me over there? He doesn't do that anymore. That's progress, and we need to understand when we're talking about progress in every area of our lives. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather, let him labor walking with his hands, the things, the thing that is good, that she may have to give to him that needeth. That's progress. That's progress. Now he's not trying to get and get and get. He's not giving to other people. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of a divine, that it may minister grace to the hearers, is in the progress, is not more gracious, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby he is sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Look at the conclusion of his progress morally. Look at his progress spiritually. Look at his progress humanly. Look at his progress supernaturally. Look at his progress heavenly progress. is making gracious progress. is making and be kind one to another. Tender hearted, forgiving one another, forgiving one another, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. You'll make progress. I will make progress. We'll make progress in every life in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 13. Colossians chapter 3. We're reading from verse 13. It says in verse 13, forbearing one another. You know, there are some people, and born again, they cannot endure 
anything. Somebody has done something mistakenly or even sometimes deliberately. But they, they must criticize. They must cut down the other fellow. They must abuse. They must fight. How could he do that to me? If I don't talk, he'll do it again. But you know what it says? For bearing one another. We need each other. We need each other. That's why it says for bearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, tell me the rest, so also do ye. Is that possible? I said, is that possible? You do it in Jesus' name. Above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. All the restlessness, let it be cleared away. That's progress. All the impatience, let it be taken away. That's progress. You cannot sit down. You cannot stay put. And you cannot be stable in any place. You must always be talking, always be moving, always be pulling, always be pushing, always be dragging. Rest. Let there be peace. And let Christ rule in your heart. And it says the peace of God ruling in your heart. To the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. Teaching and admonishing one another. Educating one another. Exhorting one another, enlightening one another, instructing one another, being of help to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts unto the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, tell me, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever you cannot do in the name of the Lord, don't do. You cannot say, I abuse you in the name of the Lord. You cannot do that. I steal in the name of the Lord. You cannot do that. I fight in the name of the Lord. You cannot do that. I'm angry. I must tell you, I'm angry in the name of the Lord. You cannot do that. I'm jealous in the name of the Lord. You cannot do that. I'm cutting down the other fellow. I'm pulling him down so that I can get to his place. You cannot do that in the name of Jesus whatsoever, whatsoever you do in watch or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him we're going to make progress I will make progress you'll make progress in Jesus name look at first John chapter 4 verse 7 first John chapter 4 we're looking at verse 7. In First John chapter 4, verse 7, it says in verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another. That's fellowship. Let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. Active man, active woman, laboring man, laboring woman. He speaks in tongues, he prays in tongues, he sacrifices, he denies himself. He's very religious, he's evangelistic. He goes here, he goes there. The only challenge is that there's no love in the heart. There's no progress because it says, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him, hearing his love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, tell me the rest. We ought also to love 
one another. We ought also to love one another. Do you know the members of your local church? If you don't know them, how do you love them? Do you know when somebody is in church and when he's not in church? If you don't know, how do you love them? Do you know when somebody is going through any challenge, any problem? If you don't know, how do you love them? Do you know if somebody, when somebody has gone to the hospital and he is, uh, you know, nobody is visiting him? If you don't know what they are going through, how do you love them? How do you grow in love? How do you grow in grace? How do you grow in helping? How do you grow in giving? How do you make progress? It says, beloved. If God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit, and we have seen. And do testify that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. Somebody there, God is love. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, because as he is, church, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. Can we say that together? Yeah, the implication of that is if you are acting and behaving that the people who know you in the church, the moment they see you, they'll be afraid of you. Your comportment your attitude, your character, your demeanor, your actions. You want people to fear you. And once you appear, you can see it on their face. You can see it in their attitude. You can see it. They become less courageous when they see you. That's not love. That's not love. If they fear you, you're not loving them. If the husband fears the wife, if the wife fears the husband, if the members of the church fear the leaders, and if the leaders fear the members of the church, that's a church that has no love. There may be activity there. There may be noise there. There may be loud praying there. If there is fear, there is no love. Look at verse 18. There is no fear in love. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Why do you want them to fear you? We don't fear Jesus. Say loving Jesus, merciful Jesus, gracious Jesus. And when we hear the name of Jesus, there, there is no palpitation in our heart. There's no fear in our life. And we're not thinking we're going to run away. Even when you've done something wrong. And then you hear the name of Jesus. It's like you want to come to Jesus and expose that thing you've done. Because we love Jesus and he makes us to love him like that. How is it? You want people to fear you when they don't fear Jesus. We must have love. I said we must have love. You have love in Jesus' name. Did you hear that kind of amen? Verse 18, verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because Fear has torment. Fear has stress. Fear has distress. Fear has torment. Fear has suffering. Fear 
brings emotional suffering. It says, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have of him, that he who loveth God, what will happen? Love his brother also. We we'll come to point number three now, maintaining steadfast perseverance in faithfulness. Maintaining steadfast perseverance in faithfulness. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, I come to verse 35. It says in verse 35, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, perseverance, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and he will not tarry. It's coming to you today. It's coming with blessing. It's coming to fulfill your need. It's coming to answer your prayer. Yet a little while, he that shall come will come, and he will not tarry. And then it says, now the just shall live by faith. You will live by faith. Stand by faith. Be courageous by faith. Be bold by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But if, somebody shout that little word, if. Say it again. That word is very important. If any man draw back, I will not draw back. Uh, look at that word, if. Look at that word, if. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verses 2 and 3. The little word, if. Very significant. Look at this. For if the word, that's the word. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience receive the just recompense of reward. Look at this. How shall we escape? Look at the word again. If we neglect so great salvation. If we neglect so great salvation. Chapter 3. I'm looking at verse 6. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast. You see that word again? That's the condition. If we hold fast, the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope unto the end. Look at verse 14. Verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. The if is always there. It's the condition of the fulfillment of the promise of God. Look at chapter 4 verse 1. Chapter 4 verse 1. Let us therefore fear. Let's say promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any official fall short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not be mixed with faith in them that heard it. Look at verse 3 now. For we which have believed do enter into rest. You'll enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath. Look at the word. If they shall enter into my rest, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. That literal word is very important. Chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 4. Chapter 6, verse 4, for it is impossible. 
For those who are once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Look at this. If they shall fall away, not just fall, when somebody falls and he goes back to God immediately and he applies the blood of Jesus by faith, the blood cleanses, God forgives, he is restored. But if he shall fall away, fall away, to renew them again to repentance, seeing they have crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. I pray none of us will fall away. Amen. Chapter 10, verse 26. Chapter 10, verse 26. For if, that's the word again, if, the condition is there. If we sin willfully, when a church where holiness is emphasized almost in every meeting, every message, we know the word of God. We know it takes repentance and faith before we're saved. And we know that he that shall continue to the end, the same shall be saved. Then if somebody deliberately, they're saying, uh, a child of God shall not sin, uh, I'm going to do it. They're saying, uh, if you go into this, then uh, all the privileges you have in the church will be withdrawn away from you. All the same, I'm going to do it. Deliberate. Look at verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and for indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy on the two or three witnesses of how much sorrow punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant. Look at this, wherewith he was sanctified. This man was saved. This man was sanctified, and it was the blood of the Lamb that saved and sanctified him. But now he counts that blood an unholy sin, and he has done despite unto the Spirit of grace. I pray it will not happen to you. Amen. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, and I will recompense, says the Lord. Again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That's why he now tells us in verse 38, Now the just shall live by faith. But if, if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But... We're not of them who draw back unto perdition. We are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Amen. I'm seeing the brother there. I'm seeing the sister there. You will not draw back. Amen. I said you will not draw back. Amen. You'll not draw back unto perdition. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Did I hear a good amen? amen. Now something good is going to happen to me. I said something good is going to happen to me. Me. I said me. Look at verse 22. It says, let us draw near with the true heart in full assurance of faith. That's assurance in my heart. That's assurance in your heart. A day of blessing has come and you're going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Look at verse 23. Let us, let us, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering because our God who has given us the promise is faithful. He will fulfill the promise in your life in Jesus' name. And look at chapter 4, chapter 4 of uh, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 16. It says, 
let us, let us, let us therefore come, let us therefore come, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find help in time of need. Mercy is coming your way. Grace is coming your way. Help is coming your way. Answered prayer is coming your way. Forward and the progress coming your way today in Jesus' name. Ephesians, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter, chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. And I'm reading here from verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3. And we're looking at verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3. Reading from verse 20. Now unto him that is able. Our God is able today. I said our God is able today. You must make progress. You will make progress. All the failures and the defeats of yesterday, they must be corrected today. And the strength of the Lord must be available for you today. Because now unto him that is able, able to do, something is going to happen in your life there able to do exceeding abundantly above all above all above all that we ask or seek according to the power that worketh in us where's the power of god working today over there in your heart in your life in your soul in your spirit in your family unto him be glory in the church by christ jesus through all the ages in the world without end and the whole church said why don't, you, why don't you rise up then and say, this is my day. This is my day. I'm going to make progress. I'm going to make progress. Spiritual progress, that's the progress we're looking for. And financial progress, that's the progress we're asking for. Material progress, that's the progress you are asking for. Family progress, that's the progress you are asking for. Moral progress, that's the progress you are looking for. Experiential progress, that's the progress you are looking for. Calm with the full assurance of faith today. Calm or the full assurance of faith today. The Lord has promised and the Lord is going to do. The Lord has promised and the Lord is going to perform. The Lord has promised and the Lord is going to answer your prayer. Come, he wants to save those who are not saved and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is available today. The strength of the Lord is available today. It's over there. It's there over there with you. And if you are backsliding, why don't you say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. It will not drive you away. The father is still receiving the prodigal son and still receiving the prodigal daughter. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. It's not going to deny you of that restoration. It's not going to deny you of that forgiveness. It's not going to deny you of his grace. It's available. It's available. It's available. Lord, I come. Strength will come from above. Grace will come from above. The goodness of the Lord will come from above. It will renew your strength. It will renew your soul. It will renew your spirit. It's going to make everything new, everything new, everything new in your life today. The moment you say yes to Christ, heaven will say yes unto you. And the moment you say, Lord, I confess and I forsake my sin, then the Lord will have mercy on you. But if you cover your sin, you'll not prosper. If you cover that evil sin, you'll not prosper. If you are pretending, you will not prosper. But if you come out clean, if you come out straight, and you say, Lord, I know I'm the sinner. I know I'm the backslider. I know I'm the wicked one. Forgive me. The Lord will forgive you today. Mercy waiting for you. Salvation waiting for you. And the forgiveness of God waiting for you. The love of God waiting for you. Whosoever, 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 whosoever will call on the name of the Lord today. He'll pardon your sin. He'll take away that sin. He'll take away the guilt. Then you'll say there's no condemnation now. For them that walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. It's available, it's available for you. Mercy waiting for you. Salvation, waiting for you. Restoration, waiting for you. Cleansing, waiting for you. A new life, a new life, waiting for you. Eternal life, the life of God, the life of Christ in man is waiting for you right now. 
call upon him, call upon him, he will answer every prayer. He will answer every prayer. He will answer every prayer. He'll answer the prayer of the weakest. He'll answer the prayer of the most sinful. He'll answer the prayer of the vilest. He'll answer the prayer of the most backsliding. Just come back home. Just come back home. Just come back home and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Have mercy upon me and mercy is flowing to you now from heaven. Mercy is flowing to you now from the throne of God. Let us come boldly. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace and find mercy and find help in this time of need. Come with strong persuasion. Strong persuasion. I know it will answer me. Strong persuasion. I know he will answer me. Strong persuasion. I know he will answer me. Then he will lift you up. He will replace that death with life. Life will come to you. Life in your spirit. Life in your soul. Remember, dead things cannot make progress. Dead lives cannot make progress. Dead spirit cannot make progress. You must come to life first. It just has to come to life. Life eternal. Life spiritual. The life of Christ in man. It is when that life comes, then progress will begin. Life, before you cannot progress, eternal life, eternal life, eternal life. Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. He gives to all who ask. Forgiveness has come. Mercy has come. Grace has come. Stretch out that hand of faith and receive. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Let it come to you right now. Ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. If I'm saved, making progress spiritually demands I'm sanctified. If I'm forgiven, making progress spiritually means I'm free. If I've got eternal life, making progress calls me to abundant life. If I have the joy of salvation, making progress calls me to purity of sanctification. He'll sanctify you. He'll purify you. The very God of peace sanctify you holy. Your soul, your spirit, your body may preserve blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Faithfully see who has called you, who also will do it. Healing is available. The name of Jesus provides that healing. That healing can be yours today. That healing can be yours today. If you diligently hack into the voice of my word, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. You can make progress in that area today. Have you been fearful of evil spirit, demonic spirit, and spirit of the devil? And then you're imagining that all the time, dreaming of that all the time, fearful of that all the time. You can make progress today and bring all those things on your feet. For the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and then bringing every imagination that's against Christ, bringing that unto obedience. Because the shield of faith, the shield of faith, the shield of faith will be able to quench all the furry darts of the wicked one in your life. Tell him, tell him, tell him, you must not go home the way you came. You must be stronger. You must not go home the way you came. You must be richer spiritually. You must not go home the way you came. You must become higher, lifted up, better, stronger in the Lord purer and whiter than snow. It must happen. Stronger. Stronger.
stronger, richer, more blessed. And then the love of God is now shared abroad in your heart. And you're reaching out to all the people. Our love, our love, our love. All that, a kind of life that makes me fear and other people to fear me. It's cancelled today, it's cancelled today, it's cancelled today. Love that has no fear of torment. Love that does not intimidate others. Love that does not frighten others. Love that does not cut down other people. Love that will not trample on other people's rights. Love. Let that love be shed abroad in your heart. Remember, steadfast perseverance, steadfast perseverance, steadfast perseverance. We're made partakers of Christ if we hold fast. Hold it fast. Hold it fast. Hold it fast. The beginning of our confidence, steadfast unto the end. Hold that fast, your testimony unto the end. Hold that fast, your conviction unto the end. Hold that fast, the doctrines of the word of God unto the end. Honestly contending for the faith, once delivered unto the saints. Anywhere you find yourself, everywhere you find yourself, hold him fast. Hold him fast. Hold him fast. Hold him fast. Not shaking, not trembling, not turning back, not giving in, not giving up. A heart that is firm, a heart that is courageous, a heart that stands on that word of God planted on the rock of ages. The wind will not make you shift. The storm will not make you shift. But to stand firm, tell the Lord, I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded that what God has promised is able also to do. What God has promised is able also to do. What promise are you claiming today? What promise are you standing on today? And one consecration are you laying upon the altar? Lord, I surrender all. Lord, I surrender all. My life, I lay on the altar for Christ. I've made my decision, made up my mind. I'm going to follow the Lord, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. I've made up my mind. I'm going to hold on to my conviction till the very end. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. The just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, that's not me. I'm not going to draw back. If any man draw back, that's not you. You are not going to draw back. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back because of persecution, because of misunderstanding and because of opposition, and because of the people of the world, and because of scarcity or poverty or need, and because of this or that, we're not of them who draw back unto perdition, but we're of them who move forward, who march forward, forward unto progress, forward unto progress, forward unto progress, forward, forward, onward, onward, Upward, moving up, moving up, moving up, moving up. And the prayer you pray here, that prayer continues at home. The prayer you pray here, that conviction continues at home. The prayer you pray here, that consecration continues everywhere you go. You are not going forward one step and going backwards two steps. Forward every day, forward every week, forward every month forward all the way through forward to progress big spiritual progress personal progress moral progress gracious progress spiritual progress 
supernatural progress let the dynamite of heaven enter into your soul enter into your life progress progress always think about that every day you wake up progress today every week you spend beginning of the week you make up your mind progress this week a new month is beginning progress this month no looking back no going back no turning back i'll make progress Before you conclude your prayer, what have you prayed about? Lay hands on that promise of God and say, yes, Lord, I thank you. Yes, Lord, I thank you. There's a confirmation in my life. Yes, Lord, I thank you. Forgiveness has come. Yes, Lord, I thank you. The mercy of God has been given. Yes, Lord, I thank you. Assurance of salvation, restoration. Yes, Lord, I thank you. Confidence in the Lord now. Yes, Lord, I thank you. An experience of sanctification. Yes, Lord, I thank you. Confirm it, confirm it, confirm it. He staggered not at the promise of God, was giving glory to God, knowing that what God has promised is able to do, able to perform, able to accomplish. Holy Ghost baptism, yes, Lord, I thank you. Healing, health, yes, Lord, I thank you. Deliverance, victory over every evil power, yes, Lord, I thank you. Strong position of faith, knowing that God is faithful, faithful, faithful. He has done it. He has answered your prayer in Jesus' name. My prayers are answered. What are you? My prayers are answered. My prayers are answered. There's a confirmation in your life today in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand for confirmation. Father, in Jesus' name, we well, thank you because we know that you are able to do, able to do exceeding abundantly above everything we ask or think. Lord, we ask there will be a confirmation in every life, even at this moment, in Jesus' name. Forgiveness for those who have asked for your mercy. Salvation for those who have asked for salvation. Restoration for those of us for restoration. We have no doubt in our heart. We have the assurance of faith. It is done in Jesus' name. You put no difference between them and us. You sanctified those people and the saints of all today. The sanctification for the believer. There will be a confirmation of that holiness, experience, purity of heart, sanctification in Jesus' name. Power. Power, power from on high, endowment of power, endowment of power, dynamite of power from heaven, give to every sanctified soul in Jesus' name. You said the God of peace shall bring Satan under our feet. My brother there under your feet, my sister there under your feet. I pray that every evil power, every power of darkness, every power of evil, every curse and every yoke will come under everyone's feet in Jesus' name. Whatever attack, whatever affliction from the top of your head to the tip of your toe, inside your belly, inside your bone, inside your system, whatever has been tormenting you, I speak the word of deliverance, you are free in Jesus' name. That attack and that affliction come to an end right now. I say for the freedom of the Lord unto you. Deliverance from the Lord unto you. Dominion to everyone here today in Jesus' name. Abundant life for everyone. 
joyful life for everyone victorious life for everyone brother from today you are more than a conqueror sister from today you are more than a conqueror my boy my girl my daughter my son there you're more than a conqueror in jesus name where you failed before you now go and succeed where you were defeated before you are lifted up and you are going to have the victory in jesus name lord put joy in every heart laughter in every mouth testimony in everyone today in jesus name at the ground floor to the right to the left to the center at the gallery to the left to the right to the center over there anywhere you are now victory has come to you dominion has come to you power has come to you defeat forgotten oppression forgotten sickness forgotten receive the blessing of god receive the goodness of god and go out with joy and singing. Confirmation in every life. Assurance in every life. Power in every life. I thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. I know it is done. I confirm it is done. I rejoice it is done. Confirmation in every life in Jesus' name. And the church said,